church hurt, from church hurt to church healed. Um, and interestingly enough, um, Tasha, I, I saw her uh, a high school friend, um, born and raised in church as well, just as I, separate churches, not but in the same um, um, organization, but different church. Um, but had similar experiences. Some I did not ex had not experienced as we talked and, and conversed about um, the different things that we've experienced in church, and um, it was very interesting. Uh, and I'm I'm very sure I'm not going to be able to cover everything in this section or in this just this one episode. Um, so we we may roll this out uh, even further because it is a it is a topic that I think has not been given as much attention that is needed. Now, when I say that, I've heard and I've seen, and um, even on Facebook, the various people talking about the church hurt, um, church um, maladies, the qualms they have with the church, but not a lot of people have talked about its process of recovery, being resilient about it. And so that's what we want to talk about today. Again, um, please, uh, comment as you are, some of you are, are already doing, like and share. We want to like and share. We want to have a conversation that is necessary, especially in the African-American uh, church, especially the Pentecostal churches. All churches are included, um, but but I want to highlight the the uh, Black church because that, that that's, well, number one, that is the area of my expertise. Uh, and I don't mean because I was born and raised in church, which definitely gave me a backdrop and a background, but my actual doctorate research was on the black church, um, included the black church. So I want to be able to, uh, uh, even with that information, share this information. Um, a, lot, a lot of people don't like to read. So even if publishing books or doing that, that um, we're trying to reach as many people as possible so that on different platforms will make it much easier. So we are, I, I am excited about this topic because I know church pain. <laughs> um, and I've witnessed it from several different sides. Um, I have two questions. They gave me the option. Um, hey, Maria and Jamar. Um, they gave me, they gave me options to ask poll questions. Please let me know in these comments if you are able to see them. Uh, hey, Kyle, uh, let me know if you're able to see there should be two questions. The first question is, have you experienced church hurt? Yes or no. And then the second question is a subsequent question. If yes, then have you gotten past it? Okay, so if you've ever experienced it, um, then, then comment or answer yes. And then if you have experienced it, um, you will answer the second question of, um, did you get past it? So let's let's dive into this uh, because it's a moment with Glover. We don't have a whole day and, and this, this conversation can go on for weeks. Um, and from church hurt to church hurt. So let's talk about church hurt. As a definition, uh, I looked it up and it, what was amazing to me is that there has been actual research done and I don't mean, you know, just your everyday, we've been talking, a lot of people I've experienced. No, 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 I'm talking about um, things that had to go through uh, empirical data and scholarly academic um, rigor in order to find. I didn't, I mean, I just, um, it's interesting that uh, research has been done on it. So research um, has been done according to Mansfield. And if you need this, let me know. Um, I don't mind sharing it, but it defines church hurt as a deeply traumatic spiritual grievance brought on when an event or series of events take place within one's house of worship and the effect is so dramatic that while the person still has faith, his or her trust in the church has failed. Let me say it again. It is, they defined it as a traumatic, a deeply traumatic spiritual grievance brought on by an event or series of events that happens at church that while the person still has faith, their trust in the church has failed. First of all, I guess, let me know what you think about that, that, um, that definition. Do you agree with that definition? Uh, 
And and as I looked at that, now I personally, I, I agree with that definition. And, and so it's basically saying that something that traumatically happened to you in church and it, and it left you in a place that while you may have still had faith, your trust or your experience with the church changed, changed. And, and many of us, many people are suffering from church hurt. And um, let me deal with this as, as I'm, I'm speaking as well, because there are a lot of people I've heard, I have heard um, that, that, and I, I see some of your comments. Um, I have heard from the rebuttal um, that says, how can you say you have church hurt? The naming convention, um, it, they come against it because they say, you know, a building can't hurt you or to group everybody in, um, in a category is unfair. And to, uh, you know, just put the whole church in a category or put the whole church in one boat is generalization and that should not be. So, you know, you can't say that you had church, church hurt. Uh, thank you, uh, Jay St. Paul. Um, he said he, he he agreed with the definition. Um, you you can't they 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 don't believe or they 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 grapple with or wrestle with the thought that you can actually have church hurt. Well, um, now I'm not sure. Again, I got a comment um, saying that they don't see the poll questions. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that part worked. I'm going to have to research that part, but I saw it. I said, hey, let's try it out. So if you don't see the poll question, it is okay. You can just comment your answer um, that you've had hurt and did you get past it? You can put that both together. If it's, yes, I've had church hurt. I got past it. Yes, I have church hurt. I did not get past it. Or, nope, didn't have church hurt. And you're just listening because, trust me, one in five people have had church hurt. And that is a very low ball number. Um, and, and when we talk about church hurt, we talk about expectations. Hurt from church is the breaking of an expectation that you believed should have happened or should not have happened at church. And there's a myriad of things that have happened um, at church in church that causes church hurt. And the response, uh, the response to church hurt usually goes goes in two different categories, um, which research says that that church you know, it's always comprised of individuals, personalities, and sensibilities. And given that mix, there's always going to be some type of conflict. Now, whether you internalize that conflict conflict enough that it becomes an internal hurt or damage, and then you separate yourself and you leave the church and you, you decide I'm not having anything else to do with the church, or there are others who actually remain in the church. They stay right there, but their, their perspective of the church, their their, their ideology, their thoughts change about church. Now, my my posture is that I, I, I was hurt by church. And sometimes I've not, I found out that I was hurt deeper than I had actually realized. That there were some things that, some damages that after I start pulling back the layers, because sometimes, you know, as a child, I was hurt in church. At six years old, uh, I was walked up to by an evangelist and was spoken words, curse, word curses were spoken over me. At six years old, I didn't know any better. And perhaps you're just like me. Didn't know any better, whether you were six or you are a new babe in Christ, or you just didn't know because you grew up in that atmosphere. Some of us who grew up in a certain style of church believed, you know, um, um, you were going to hell for everything. You know, you couldn't go to the movies because it was going to hell. If you, you know, ladies, they wore lipstick, were going to hell. If they uh, cut their hair, they were going to hell. I mean, there was all these sins, all this listing of different things that we later found out were not accurate nor correct. But at that time, um, we believed them and we didn't know any better. We didn't, we didn't walk in the light at that part because the light hadn't shined down upon us. But nonetheless, it still caused damage and had expectations that people would not lie to us or people would treat us a certain way or people would be integrous uh, about who they are, their motives. And, and that's a lot of the, the discomfort of church is going to a place where you felt 
that especially the leaders, and that, that's usually where, where the break is, is coming with those with titles, those who seem to have authority, seem to have 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 the know-it-all that they should be somewhere further. Well, the first thing is that we have to we have to reassess the storyline and take ownership for the part that we play. And it's like, well, I didn't know any better. I didn't, that is correct. That is very true. But there was an acceptance, even because you didn't know you had options. Because <laughs> it was turn or burn. It was come clean or stay away dirty. But there were options. You just weren't aware of it. So you allowed, uh, there was an allowance on your part. And you have to give grace with yourself. Just say, I didn't know you better. Why is that important? Because psychologically, in your mind, you keep blaming and not taking ownership. And once you take ownership, you're taking, it's more about, it's more than just taking ownership. You take control. Once you take ownership, I allowed this. I didn't know any better. If I had known any better, I may or may not have made different choices. But these were the choices I allowed them to do whatever. Whatever it is, to say whatever it is, to mandate whatever it is, to make the impression that God was angry at me for whatever reason, that I couldn't even accept my own self, that I couldn't even accept the love that God had manifested for me, but I allowed it in my ignorance or blatantly aware. And once you take that ownership, you also take control. So that's the first thing is acknowledging that I was a part of this. Maybe because my, as a child, my mama made me come to this church. But there are plenty of children that won't allow adults to just tell them they don't believe. I don't care what you say. Bro, beat me, beat me, make me eat, not eat. I'm still not going to accept. So that acceptance causes a whole thing, a whole a lineage of problems that happen. And so I'm, I'm toggling between uh, screens, but we have to be able to know, and, and there is this, this saying that says, hurting people hurt people. Have any of you heard that? Hurting people hurt people. Hurting people hurt people. I want to affirm that, that that is very true. But here's, here's that that's a nice, saying and it's packaged nicely but let's unpack that because if you are you are a physician that is who you are that's what you study to be that's what you're called to be a healer but what happens when the doctor is sick and they still operate on the person the patient what happens when the doctor is ill and infirmed, but they have to perform anyway. I come to tell you today that many of our churches are operating in that same vein. That we, that the pastors or the leaders are infirmed themselves, but they don't have PTO time. They don't have days off. And so in our culture, the black church culture, we have allowed them to continue to operate infirmed without any respite, without getting any care, without going somewhere to get their own selves together. Hurting people hurt people. So while you're operating on the patient, the patient may actually get healed or remedy from that. But what else did you breathe into that patient? What illness of your own did you transfer? So now they're maybe even better in one area, but now they have a, 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 a cause or a, a, an additional ailment that they didn't have before. So now they have, they, they, they're able to deal and cope in this area, but this area suddenly something's askew, something's awry because the surgeon was not completely healed before surgery. And we have allowed and did not account for the fact that surgeons have problems and surgeons get sick too. Now they sign a waiver and they sign, you know, the insurance that gives them 
make sure that they know that if they're not up to par, if they're not healed, if they're not well, do not walk in to a, to a patient's, uh, to the, the operating table and you're not well. But we don't have that clause in the church. We expect them to show up every Sunday. We expect for them to perform every Sunday. And we'll look at them with a side eye if we find out, you know, that they're not coming. Again, where's your faith in God? How many mental pastors, psychological pressed pastors have been out there and they, 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 they do surgery on you, they teach and they give you counsel from their own misfortune, from their own baggage, from their own weight. How do you deal with that? How do you, the first thing is to acknowledge.